This will keep the coons and the deer out of your garden. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. So we're gonna show y'all today how we keep deer out of this garden that's down here in the middle of these woods. We are literally in the middle of the woods. And in this area, I'm gonna tell you our two biggest fights with animals in this area are deer and raccoons. And this method we're gonna show y'all today will hopefully keep both of them out. So y'all, this involves putting a fence up around the garden. Um, and we usually don't do it till everything's planted. So we're not getting in here with the tractor and stuff like that. But I do fix it so we can open it up on both ends because chances are everything in here will have to be cultivated one more time. Um, now but, we've got planted down here yeah, for anybody corn. new. Yeah. We got sweet corn, crowder peas, um, a late patch of sweet corn, and a section of sunflowers here. And don't judge us on this here sweet corn because this is not the prettiest sweet corn we've ever had. I don't know what's going on down here in this garden this year. <laughs> but anyways, that's another story. The, the new sweet corn, it appears to sell this. It's looking pretty good right now. It's all coming up pretty pretty even. I don't know. Maybe it was just the weather on this because this other was planted earlier and it's been real cool lately. But our sweet corn we have down here is honey select here, honey select here, and that over there is serendipity, which we've never planted before, and we just kind of wanted to try it. Um, then our two rows of Crowder peas, or their pink eye purple hole peas, are right there. And they're not looking that great either this year. I think it's been too cold on them too. It hasn't been hot, and I know Crowder peas like hot, and they're finally starting to put on some new growth. They first just came up and sat there, didn't do anything. But they're finally putting on a little bit of new growth. We'll see. I'm I'm not putting a whole lot of faith in them. And if they don't do anything, it's it's kind of like, oh, well, whatever. We're going to plant us a little patch up at the house um, where, where we're taking the garlic out of it. But anyways, today's video is about this here fence. I'm not talking about the garden. We need to quit that. <laughs> so what we do is we've got a whole perimeter set up around it here with T-posts that, that stay here all the time. We never take these down. And anytime we mow or are working here with the tractor or whatever, we just work around them. And all it takes to keep your deer out is one strand of wire on the inside. And then you got to do like a perimeter around the outside of your main fence. You'll do another fence out here. Well, that keeps deer out. What we used to do, we put like a strand on the inside and then come out here with another strand of hot wire and they can't judge that distance it's not the height it's the distance they can't judge um and so they won't jump it and they won't get in there but you do have to have power on it because if not they'll just walk up under it so you got to have something on it that'll shock them so what we were finding out though is we was having a problem with coons as well and the coons would just walk right under it no problem so we decided to start using some of the the electrified netting for our perimeter for the outside perimeter fence. And that has worked awesome. It's keeping every bit of the coons out. And then we've just got that one strand on the inside, which does not have power on it. Outside's the one that's got to have the power. The inside fence can be no power and it doesn't hurt anything. It's just there for the deer to see. So they, they're thinking to themselves, they can't jump over that distance. So we're gonna get all this put up and kind of show you how we do it. We've had a lot of people comment on previous videos talking about Billy's bone sauce, and we do also use that to an extent down here. What we found with the deer pressure being as heavy as it is in this area, we did a perimeter around the garden with the bone sauce, and they were just walking around it. Um, but now we did take some stakes and put them in the deer trails, and that helped tremendously. So we do also have that down here. Um, but the fence is really the biggest thing. So the coons get shocked from the net. Deer can't figure out how to jump it. Can't walk through it. Works pretty good. Come here, Maggie. Right here at this post is one of the stakes she was talking about that we put bone sauce on. And there's one in it. There's actually one at each T-post. There's a stake with bone sauce on it, which we have not 
redone it this year. That's from last year, so probably wouldn't hurt to redo that. But like she said, it was kind of funny. We noticed that the deer trail, instead of walking right through here, the tracks would go way out there and go around these stakes. So, I mean, it, this stuff works, but as Billy stated many times before, that stuff is meant for more like an orchard type setting, not meant to keep deer out of open gardens. And it it, it works, like, like I've mentioned before, we put it on our tomato stakes one year and it, we never had a problem with a deer eating the tomatoes, but it was right there at what we were trying to keep the deer out of. So this is a good way to keep the deer out if you've got a big area and you've got power available to energize the fence. I've got this one up. Good. So a few things to take into consideration. I know some people are probably gonna say, you know, that looks like an expensive way to keep deer out. And it is an upfront investment. Um, this right here took about three rolls of netting to cover around this, plus our cost in the T-post and in the poly rope. But you have to think, we're using these things year to year. I mean, these T-posts and this wire's been down here for years. <laughs> Um, the netting is uh, two or three years old as well. So, I mean, we made that one-time investment. Worst come to worst, we have to buy another roll of netting uh, if one of these wears out. So to us, rather than losing most of our corn crop, of our sweet corn, because you will, uh, in this area anyway, you'll lose it. Um, you know, we wanted to make a little investment and protect our stuff. So y'all, we won't have to touch this netting no more this year until we get ready to take it up. And honestly, we actually usually leave it up all winter long. We usually never really take the netting down. The reason they took it down this time is because I wanted to get everything cleaned up real good. And uh, we had one old piece of netting that had been used for now for, I wanna say about three years and the wires it got caught up long story short somebody backed into it one time and uh it got caught up on a bumper or something and it got drugged and it tore up some of the stuff well after that these little balls right here everything just started coming apart on it so we were able to get one more year out of it and we just decided to take it up and put out some fresh netting and this is some we were used this on the goats i think so many years ago but um, back when we actually had goats. But I want to tell you one thing though. This Premier Wanton netting is fairly expensive. I don't even, I don't like using this Premier One on something that's going to stay up all the time. But is that going to... Does anybody else have this problem with netting? <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to use this, this netting right here is our newest roll that come off of Amazon. And it was a cheap brand that was on there, but it's got these stiff posts and they work a whole lot better at keeping the netting tight and looking neat on a setting where it's going to be staying there for a long time. Now, when it comes to moving stuff every week or whatever, the Premier One netting is the only way to go. I love that netting for that. But for stuff that's going to be set up here and stay here for like six months or whatever, I prefer this cheaper netting with those stiff posts 10 to 1 over this stuff and we got that off of amazon so i'll put a link for y'all down in the description i can't even remember the name of it now what brand it was it was something odd i don't know y'all know how amazon is you find all kinds of brands on there well you pulled that a whole lot tighter than what i had it yeah, I know. I got a whole lot more overlap. This is about what we had last year. It's got worked out about the same. 
Now that netting right, this blue netting, we need to start back over there and work it this way. Cause I want the overlap right here where we won't be moving. Now I'm gonna stand right here and see if y'all can see the difference in the distance here. This is what Andy was explaining to you earlier. But you can see how far away this is from that. And the deer do, they have a hard time judging. They can't jump it. From what I found, it can probably be, oh, this right here is probably only two foot. You can probably stretch it from two foot to five foot. Cause we got one section over there that's the way the netting lined up. It's a whole lot farther away from the fence, but it always works. Just as long as it's close enough to your main fence that they can't. That it looks funny to them. Yeah, it looks funny to them, really. All you're doing is creating a kind of like an optical illusion for them. but we use an all natural deer repellent. And I can also link that as well. If you're interested in that, um, I'll find the jug. <laughs> yeah, but it smells like rotten eggs. It stinks real bad, but it does work as long as you keep it on there. Uh, like if it were to rain or if it's been a week or so since you put it on there, make sure you reapply it. Uh, but that works pretty good until about the end of the summer. It's like the deer get used to it and they don't care anymore. They're gonna eat your garden, but it does work for a while. y'all if you end up in a corner where you don't have a post that lined up just right i use these little um cheap fiberglass posts and just kind of put it in there then i'll just take and put a couple of the strands in those and there you go that holds it away from your corner and uh that's it and this will keep the coons and the deer out of your garden as long as you can electrify this you have to electrify this outside run you can electrify the inside one if you want to the neighbor over here does theirs that way but um i just about promise you you will not have a deer or a coon in your garden if you keep power on this right here and you've got it set up like this at least it ha we haven't yet now watch it this this has been a weird year already so it'll probably be the year that they'd figure out how to jump this but um well we've been doing it this way for years and hadn't had hadn't had an issue yet yeah and you know used to like she said even on our bigger gardens we kept that uh i kept that deer repellent in a backpack sprayer on my back all the time once a week i'm down here spraying every single row and not only is that tiresome and you get tired of doing it but that junk is expensive now it's really gone up a lot it's like we were buying it by a two and a half gallon jug and last year I bought a jug and that was the last one I bought. And even then it was over $200 for that jug. But that jug lasts like as much as we were doing, that jug lasts more than one season. But still, if we've got the netting, you've got wire, you put this up, you put power on it, you're done with it. You don't have to worry about it. And you just let your crop that you're growing in there do its thing. And what we've got set up to get power over here Instead of having a separate fence charger over here, since we're so close to our uh, cow and horse fence, which is just across the creek, I've actually just got a uh, regular wire like you would run to an outside building or something. And it's just laying across the top of the ground and goes across the creek over and ties to the fence over there. I've got one of these clips. Take and uh, tie it to the fence there. Hook it onto that wire. And I don't hear it popping. <laughs> Let's make sure we got power on that.
Okay, so we're at 5.9 on it. It should have a little more than that. But uh, it's probably because we've got that other netting up there on the chickens. And then just the stuff that's touching around on this. Let's unhook it here and see if it changes anything. Okay, we're at 6.6 .6 there. Huh. This should be more than that, I would think. And that's the bad thing about using this type of wire. This stuff will eventually short out on the ground for whatever reason. Um, I've seen it happen a lot and cause you to lose some power. So we may have to replace this wire, but either way, that wire has been there a while. So it wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't starting to short out. And I mean, it gets run over right here all the time. So we may have to check on that any old ways promise you that'll keep a deer out of your garden and look it don't even have to have the big string on the inside right across here we've got the little bitty braided wire as long as it's something the deer can see over there like a physical something they can see they will not try to jump over this but anyways that's how we do it well y'all give it a try let us know how it works for you i'd love to hear your feedback um to know if it's just our deer that it freaks out or if it's all of them. <laughs> but anyways, appreciate y'all watching. Y'all be sure to share this video if it did help you out a little bit. And we'll see you on the next one.